Kamoi Den is a manga that I've wanted to make a video for a very long time now, but I haven't because it's not available anywhere in English. There is not even a fan translation of it. I think there's maybe a couple dozen pages online, but it looks like it was abandoned, which is very surprising considering that it is a kind of totemic work that came out in Garo, the uh, manga magazine that basically kicked off Gekiga, the more adult-oriented manga wave, and Kamoi Den was one of the touchstones of that, and it's never been released in English until there was recently an announcement that Drawn and Quarterly will be putting it out in a 10 volume set, I believe, starting in 2024. So I thought it would be a good time to talk about it. And this won't just be like teasing uh, the viewer of this of something that they can never actually read. You'll be able to read it soon. And this is just kind of laying down the groundwork of what it is from what little knowledge that I have about it. Because in English, Kamoi Den is very sparse. I don't remember where I heard about it, probably like in an interview or a manga review about something else. Uh, if you look on Wikipedia, last time I looked, the cover image about Kamoi Den is not from Kamoi Den. So when you talk about this being translated into English, oftentimes you'll see people say, oh yeah, Viz put it out in the 90s. That is incorrect. What they put out were spin-offs of this original series. The actual original, like long running one, it has only been translated, to my knowledge, into French. It was put out by Sensei in 2010. It was a four-volume set. They did the first printing, and then it has never been printed again. This book is so hard to get that, like, this version, which was purchased by my brother online, clearly was sold by a library or mm, probably more realistically stolen from a library, which I do not condone. But uh, I am not in France, so this was not going to be something that was going to be accessible to me or my brother, and I was very happy that I was able to read it. So why has it not been translated into English? Now, some people have told me it's because the author never wanted it to go out there in a translation, that the French one itself was very difficult to engineer, and that when it was done, no more of the printings, and from what I heard that when uh, Senpei Shirato passed away, he actually didn't give his family publishing rights to it. So it would just never be published again, at least in an international form. But something happened, it's finally coming out, and now I shall crack this book open and we will look at what it is. You look at the picture here, it's not really giving you any hint of what it is, it's just kind of like a close-up image. It says manga cult, it's exactly what it sounds like, cult manga. And then you crack it open and you jump right in into the illustrated pages and you get, huh, kind of a pastoral thing. And if you even just flip through, all right, let me see some characters. Oh, it's actually fairly straightforward what you would almost associate with a kind of teenage manga and that like even the figures can get very cartoony and it looks sometimes even like Go Nagai, but then you get these gigantic blocks of text throughout. Oftentimes it is notes by the author. Sometimes it is contextual note explaining like the history behind what you're seeing. And this is the thing about Kamoi Den is that like the spinoffs, probably the reasons that the uh, people that publish it, like I think it was Viz, maybe it was Eclipse put it out, is that it's understandable as a samurai manga. This one you don't really know what it is if you're just reading it from the get-go because it starts with tons of characters. It's jumping all over the place. Uh, hundreds of pages in, it turns into a nature manga following a wolf that is, uh, you know, separated from his pack before eventually jumping into the kind of narrative proper. But even then, it is a very, you know, uh, broken up narrative. It's principally about two characters, one of high class, one of lower class, with the lower class one kind of wanting to go up against the ruling class, organizing himself, and not trying to take revenge, uh, so to say, but more trying to find a better place for him. And the way that he does it is through collective action. At least that's the way that it's building up to it. Kamoi Den is mostly famous for being a kind of socialist manga. And I thought that I had learned about this from an article that said that Hayao Miyazaki was incredibly 
uh, inspired by Kamoi Den in his own work. But when I looked it up on the internet, I recently discovered that Hayao Miyazaki, not a fan of Kamoi Den or really the work of Sanpai Shirato, complaining that as a socialist kind of text, it encouraged too much violence. And because of that, if you followed kind of the lessons that are done in this, there would be so many dead bodies and there would no, be no one alive anymore to go through these things. I don't know if I agree with Miyazaki in this case, because like, listen, any kind of rebellion is going to have some violence in it. A lot of people are going to die. And the reality is that time goes on. History keeps moving. And that's what's really great about this comic book is that once things start to really get into focus, that there's a flow of where the story is going, that there's consequences to all of the actions that happen in this book. At characters who do something at like page 590, it may be paid off whew, 500 pages later, all of the pieces kind of connecting, creating a truly believable world of all of this injustice, inequality, and the characters that are trying to fight towards it. While it is in this cartoony style, you do get like really pulse pounding action scenes, very cinematic in the way that they're presented and also very violent. I don't know if I'll be able to kind of, you know, get pinpoint a violent action scene, but that's kind of the magic of a book like this that is decompressed in its storytelling while juggling so many things is that when action really hits, it's shocking, especially when you can see characters that you've been following for a very, very long time be injured in ways that you couldn't imagine because you've been spending so much time with them. This is not following any of those shonen style tropes, even though that it does have, you know, a lower class character who is fighting his way up but he's always pushed into different directions than you expect, leading to, you know, really interesting storytelling that even this first book, which is, I believe, about 1,500 pages, is a lot of setup of stuff that you know is going to be paid off later on. I'm really fascinated at the way that Drawn and Quarterly are going to publish uh, this book because when you see something like this big, my first instinct is there's a few reasons for that. One, they want to get it out as quickly as possible, really squeeze the audience who they know will pay for a big book, or two, it's slower paced and they're worried that people will not be hooked in the way that you need to be hooked to want to keep reading these books. Uh, there is a very clear endpoint to what I think will be their book one. Kind of a shocking twist that when it happens, you go, wait, how is this manga gonna be able to continue if this happened? And the reality is it's kind of a cheat of how it does it, that if you, when you see the twist happen, that you're gonna think, oh wait, if it's gonna continue with this character, there's only really one way they can do it. And that's what the author does. But beyond that, this is classic manga. This is essential manga, at least to my knowledge, which again is very light that I am still a manga novice when it comes to this kind of stuff. But Kamoi Den was very fascinating to me just because it was unavailable while everybody was saying it is incredibly important. And reading it, you realize, yes, this is important. Yes, this is engaging. And there's not much like this that I've been able to read in English. So, or a language that I understand. I can understand French, which is what this book is in. And so I found this just a, an excellent read. And anyone watching this, if you have any interest in it, you got to pick up when uh, Drawn and Quarterly finally does those books. I really hope that they keep all the context and the notes. I don't know how they would separate it from the text because it is essential of understanding what's going on because it is so kind of you know, drilled into a historical period where all of the stuff and the kind of things built around it are very important in understanding the story. And I hope it becomes just like a classic text now that it can finally be published, which, you know, Drawn and Coralie is doing a lot of this stuff with Garo stories. And I can't wait, you know, once they do this, which was the big white whale, uh, what else they have up their sleeve. Supposedly old manga does not sell that well. And that's a real shame because there's so much enjoyable stuff for people that read shonen manga or new stuff, just pieces of art that deserve to be discovered. These books in French, like they are so difficult to get that like I was able to get my hands on thanks to buying them at the Beguiling locally in Toronto, the entire set of this. And it was an absurd amount of money. I did not pay it. My brother did. And he made a joke when he was buying it that, of course, in a year or so, 
they're going to announce that an English publisher is going to do it. That's how it worked with this kind of stuff. And they did. It's finally coming out. But this gives me an opportunity to talk about this. And like I said at the beginning of the video, not be teasing. It's coming. I don't think there's been pre-orders yet, but keep your eyes out for Kamor Den. It is an excellent manga that I feel that anyone even curious in the manga genre should give a read. If you like this video and you like talks about manga or comic books, please check out the podcast that I co-host with Mike Wood, the Very Fine Comic Book Podcast. We publish every week. Basically, the idea is every episode is kind of an introduction to a topic. We talk about a run or like a six-issue miniseries. And we just really want to get people into comic books. And we approach it in kind of a everything goes. Me and Mike have very similar tastes, but we also have very... I would like to think universal taste that we're willing to discuss and experiment with all sorts of stuff, whether it be manga, we did an episode on Ranma one and a half or all the newspaper comic strips like crazy cat. We even just did an episode coming up a week from the posting of this video. And there is a controversial thesis that I give in that you'll just have to listen to the podcast to find out what it is. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.